What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 79 of the Unofficial NCLEX podcast. My name is Katie Cleaver, and I am your host. Today's episode is entitled, Follow Requirements for Use of Restraints and or Safety Devices. Y'all, this is serious. <laughs> this is not a fluffy point. This is a very, very, very important point. Um, most units may require you utilizing restraints in some capacity. I would think, just off the top of my head, the unit that uses this the least is probably labor and delivery. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another unit where you rarely have to use these. Maybe pediatrics. Um, but... I think the units that use this the most is probably critical care um, and then behavioral health, but they have very different kind of ways they go about doing things. So we're not going to talk about behavioral health specifically. We're just going to talk about just general use of restraints. And in the PDF, I put a, a link to something called Focus on Safety use of restraints by the American Nurses Association. I was actually really impressed with this one because it had really good pictures. I thought it was, you know, talked about the important stuff. It wasn't very fluffy. It was practical definitions and explanations and really good pictures. Because if you, you, you know, you hear restraints and I think if you've not been exposed to it in the nursing environment, you get weird pictures in your brain. (laughs) So I think it's important for you to take a look at them. So soft wrist restraints are probably the most often utilized form of restraints. Um, Especially in the critical care environment, that's kind of what we use a lot for patients that are maybe trying to pull out their breathing tube um, that are, you know, very confused and unstable so we have an increased reason to restrain them because we're concerned about their safety so let's talk about the regression first you should always try alternatives and document that you tried them and that you use the least invasive kind of method so you know I reoriented the patient I distracted them I removed um, unnecessary lines and tubes, um, or, you know, Hey, you know, the patient's really confused. He's pulling out IVs and he's got a couple good ones. Why do I have four in? You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things. Um, or, you know, choosing to start an IV on the arm that, um, you know, moves versus the one that doesn't move, you know, things like that. So, Another, and I wanted to let you guys too know too, this isn't just important for NCLEX, but just as a functional nurse, this is really important because, you know, you have to do this appropriately, but this is something Joint Commission and the powers that be look at very closely and especially your documentation to make sure you're doing it appropriately. So I can't describe really how, like, this is a really important thing to do, not just for the NCLEX, but just as a nurse. So, and and making sure you're documenting appropriately. So you're trying alternatives and let's say those don't work and we've done the least invasive and then it's like, okay, we really need to restrain this patient. So the first thing you do um, is make sure the patient's safe. So if you need to restrain them, restrain them. And then, but immediately notify the physician, hey, hey, Dr. Smith, um, your your patient, Philip Peters is, I had to put him in restraints. He's, you know, pulling out lines and he's trying to pull out his endotracheal tube and I've got him on propofol and he's confused and blah, blah, blah. So letting the physician know. Then the physician says, okay, yeah, let me get, I'll give you an order for um, bilateral soft wrist restraints. And so you put the order in or, or the physician puts the order in, put, and you put in the appropriate documentation and then you follow the fo- the facility's policy to a T, follow it very specifically. That's something as a nurse, I would be, I would really want to know exactly what the pr- procedure is for restraining a patient because you probably need to do that or at least know how to get to it. Use the appropriate way to tie them. So usually like with, um, soft wrist restraints you have they go they are soft around the wrist and they kind of velcro and they latch and then you tie them to the bed but you don't ever tie them to the side rails because those move you want to do a quick release knot where you can you know it's not like tying your shoes because if you have an emergency you can't sit there and mess with the knot to undo it. You have to have a quick release. And there's a specific way to do that. And it's something that you, you really have to see. I can't really ex- describe it to you. But it, you, you must use a quick release knot so that you can quickly let them out um, if there was some sort of an emergency. And always, again, secure things to the bed and not the side rail. 
So the bottom of the bed or a lot of hospital beds now have little like places where you can actually attach them to. There's also, you need to monitor them regularly um, and routinely. So it's not like you put someone in restraints and say, whew, good to go for the shift. They're intubated, sedated, and they're restrained. I don't have to do anything. Like, no, that's not how this works. So you restrain them, you educate them, and you educate them in the family about, or in the loved ones about why this is necessary. And we're going to do this for the least amount of time as possible. And we're going to do everything we can to get rid of these. And every, and when you're documenting, you document why they're on them. You make sure they have the order and you make sure you document specific method because there's a lot of different methods. You know, you could do like a posy vest, which is kind of a vest that secures the patient to the bed. So this would be more for the patient trying to get out of bed and, and, um, maybe trying to get them. They're not like picking at things, but mostly it's people picking at things. I find that soft wrist restraints are used much more often. Also want to document the time and duration and your continuous routine and uh, assessments and their responses. So, you know, every, at least every two hours, I'm taking the restraint off. I'm doing some range of motion. I'm making sure their skin is okay. I'm making sure their needs are met. So do they need to go to the bathroom? Do they need to be turned? Do they need some food? Um, You know, all those kind of basic needs that you would want. You don't just want to leave someone restrained and just leave them there. That's not, well, that's not allowed first of all, but so really, um, this does can vary slightly from facility to facility. So again, making sure you're looking at your, the policies and procedures and following it to a T and documenting, like that's one of those things you cannot forget to document, if that makes sense. So that concludes episode 79, follow requirements for the use of restraints and or safety devices. This has been another episode of the unofficial Inclex Prep Podcast. To get the massive PDF guide that goes along with this podcast, head over to nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's a free download that you can take with you anywhere, and you can basically have this podcast in text format. Our goal here at nrsng.com is to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to succeed in nursing school on the Inclex and in your life as a nurse. We want you to succeed, and we want you to become part of this movement of nurses that is dedicated and motivated to learning and becoming the best nurse that they can possibly be. My name is John Haas, RNCCRN, and I'm the founder of NRSNG.com, and I sincerely thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you for taking this step in your journey. Now you know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.